So now that we've seen some built-in functions, and there's several more, feel free to look those up. Let's uh, look how to create our own functions. These are called user-defined functions, and I suppose the reason why they called it user-defined functions is that we are the users or the scripters of the database, and so we wish to define our own functions, which do not come built in with SQL. Okay, now in true SQL style, that's the syntax is a little, little verbose. Let's create function uh, get num orders. So pop pop. Uh, that's going to return. So we have to say returns an int and as begin and again begin and end are like our curlies here. Uh, now you would think that I could just say as we would in code return select. Uh, count splat from orders. However, syntactically this doesn't parse because notice this is called a scalar value function. I'll get to that in a minute. But um, basically we have to return a scalar and a select returns a table even though the table has one row, one column. So in order to return a scalar, that word scalar if you're not familiar with it, basically when you hear the word scalar, think single value like int or uh, char, even var char, it's just one value versus a whole table with rows and columns. Okay, so that's what I mean by scalar. So I'm going to declare, I'm going to call this ret, it's going to be an int. I'm going to say select at ret gets the count from orders. And then here I have to say return at ret. So when I run this, notice nothing really happens. It just says commands completed successfully. So to use this function, just like any other function in any other programming language, I have to execute that function. So the way we do that is rather straightforward. So to execute this function, I have to actually um, call exec. Go figure. I'm going to comment this out because what happens is when you run something that says create function or create table or other creates that we'll see later, that creates the function and stores it as this um, piece of code in SQL. In fact, over here in the object explorer, if we drill down in the Northwind database that I have here, uh, databases, Northwind, uh, tables, not tables, sorry. It's in programmability, meaning we're programming here, we're scripting if you wish. So programmability going to look at functions, and there's all these different kind of functions, but we, we want to look at the scalar valued functions. I'll show you a table valued and other ones in a minute, but scalar valued functions. And here, we've created get num orders, and it's stored in our database. And if I double click on it, I believe, if I hit modify, yeah, it brings up what it actually translated into. So it took our syntax, stored it, and yada yada. Notice this is relatively similar to what we had before, but anyway, you can ignore that. It's now stored in our database. So I want to execute it. So I'm going to execute get num uh, orders. And I'm not sure. Let's run that. Commands completed successfully. Notice I didn't put parentheses out here. When you execute functions, you don't actually put the parentheses out there. Um, I'll get into that in a little more detail. But basically, I'm just calling it as normal. Notice though, nothing really interesting happened because our function here returned the count from orders, but we didn't store it or print it anywhere. So I'm going to declare a variable we can actually store it in. So let's go down here and declare uh, at, uh, let's do num orders. Num orders. It's an int. And I'm going to do down here and say at num orders gets get num orders. And then I go down here and say um, select at num orders, or I can print uh, at num orders, either one orders. Okay. In fact, let's just do the print because the print's a little more intuitive, I think. So, anyway, get num orders. It runs and it looks like there's 830 orders in the Northwind database. Okay, so that's kind of cool, but I want to add some arguments to this function because getting the number of orders is, is it's kind of useful, but I'd like to get it for a certain customer ID. So, one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, well, what data type is the customer ID in the customer's table? So, if I look here, customer ID, it looks like it's it's uh, nchar5, nchar5, pk means primary key there. So let's do, um, let's put an argument here. We're going to say at customer ID, and it's an nchar5. All right, so now we've given our, our uh, user defined function here an argument. And uh, well, let's keep going. So let's go over here. And uh, from orders, so select, so at ret, let's just indent this a little bit so you can see it. Select at ret gets count from orders where customer ID equals at customer ID. 
Okay, so I now have modified this function. I wish to store its modified state into my database. So I'm going to just uh, highlight this portion to run it independently. Hit a 5. We're going to get an error. It says there's already an object named get num orders in the database. Can't do that. Remember I came over here and I said that uh, that user defined function actually persisted. So, so what I'm going to do here, there's two ways I can do this. I can create, I can, uh, I can say drop function get num orders. Okay, and uh, F5 and commands completed successfully. Go over here. It's still there because we haven't refreshed. Let's go refresh this. Notice it's gone. Um, but but the second way is, generally when you're doing a drop here, sometimes it'll exist, sometimes it won't. Like, you, you can see I was kind of in an intermediate stage there where I had it in the database but I was trying to create it again. So one very useful function um, is object ID. So I can say if if the um, object ID, uh, what I call it, get num orders. Let's just grab it. Get num orders. If it's not uh, is not null, so object ID returns the number or an ID associated with with. Uh, in this case, it's a function. It could be a table. It could be any sort of object. We'll learn about more objects. Uh, later, but for now, the only objects you really know about are these functions and tables. Yeah, uh, if it returns a non-null value, then we we know it's already in there, so we want to drop it. So I'm just going to put drop get num orders, and uh, let's put a go here, which basically separates this command from this command. Um, so basically, we're going to say, hey, check if it's there. If if it is there, get rid of it because I'm about to recreate it right here. So a little trick we do. Um, notice I didn't have the beginning and and end on here because I have a one-liner. I can get away with that. Anyway, and I'm going to put a go here between the... Um, so here's my... Sorry for all the scrolling. Here's my function definition. I want to create the function. Have all that. Put a go. And then down here I'm going to say, hey, declare num orders, get num orders, all that stuff. But this time we have a, a customer ID. And I could give this a default value. Uh, alf ki, I believe, is the first first one in there. But in, in this in this case, I don't think it makes much sense to hard code it to some dependent value in my table. So I'm actually going to leave that out. But I can, um, when I execute uh, getting them orders here, I can just put alf ki here, alf ki, and run that. We see that alf ki has six orders in our database. So so basically, get num orders, we pass the literal string alf ki into get num orders, which became our customer ID. And then I said, okay, give me the count from orders where the customer ID is equal to the customer ID passed in, which is alf ki. So this was replaced with alf ki for that instance of execution. Anyway, let's go back. Sorry. Oh, now I'm all messed up. Let's go here. I'll put that right there. So there you go. There's a user defined function. This is called a scalar user defined function because it returns a scalar. Um, this is how we we invoke the functions. We have to say exec here, and you're good to go. So in the next future, in the next video, I'll show you some uh, variations here on the user defined functions, uh, table valued, and so forth.